Hi. I'm always bragging about uh, about the Glock 27, but I thought maybe I would uh, shoot the Glock 23. Another piece of uh, Gaston Glock's genius. Glock 23, 40 caliber. Nice. That's my record. Woo! It came down to the fact I could have one Glock, maybe even one semi-automatic pistol, you know, plenty of ammo with it, of course, and availability. It would probably be a good old Glock 23. Hey, Cock 45 here. We're going to do a revisit today. We're going to revisit a pistol. Let me see if I can find it over here. Uh, oh my gosh, they're all kind of alike. Uh, what's that? Uh, 1920s? Are these 9 millimeters? Oh, there's a 23. There's a 23. Okay, there's some ammo. Let's take a shot. Glock 23, revisit. Like a little smoking to begin with. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I didn't smoke much. Neither did that. <laughs> oh, now that did. Nice. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. <laughs> got him on the bounce. Oh, nice. Nice. A little shrapnel got him. Yeah, Glock 23 re revisit is what we're about today. And I happened to finally find it there on the table amongst those other Glocks. And I want to tell you about that because it plays into the revisit to tell you the truth. First, I want to be sure you go to the, just look at that, 23 Gen 4. So this one is one that I've had a good while. I guess I probably, this is back when I was getting T&E guns from Glock, actually going to the trouble of all the paperwork and getting them from a uh, Glock directly uh, to test and evaluate, quote unquote, and then send back to them if I didn't purchase it. And uh, boy, life is so much simpler now getting these from Bud's, speaking of Bud's gun shop. <laughs> but that's where that one came from. And uh, this is one I just bought used at the Nashville Gun Show. And it's pretty cool. That's the one we use, Glock 23, in uh, that long range. That's an old video at 230 yards. Now, if you've seen that, but you know, the Resolution is not exactly high tech or high def, but uh, we shot this at 230 yards at the big gong over there on the, the far hill. And just, just again, trying to show that, you know, they're as accurate as we are, okay, on any given day, you know, handguns for the most part, at least standing and shooting. So anyway, we're gonna revisit this a little bit. We're not gonna take a lot of time. We'll shoot a little bit. And in our revisits, we just like to update you on a firearm that you've seen here maybe several times. The firearm I've shot a lot, John shot a lot, and maybe we just haven't brought one out for a while. And we did it with the Glock 19 and a couple other uh, firearms. And kind of update you on our opinion of it, okay, after a certain amount of time has passed, maybe years, several years. Uh, what do we think now? If we haven't done a video on this gun for a while, uh, you know, and we get those questions. I've, I've been requested to do this in a revisit. We had another firearm we want to do a revisit with here soon, and it was really had it on the list to do next, but I keep getting requests to do the Glock 23. And, uh, uh, you know, I needed to do it, okay? I need to explain to you why you've not seen it lately. That's part of the revisit, okay, the 23. Quickly, my history with the 23 is I, uh, I got into it early, I think they started making the 22 and the 23, the 40 caliber Glocks, in uh, about 1990. And I was competing at the time doing IPSC, and some of us were kind of excited about this new cartridge, the 40 caliber. We'd still be able to have pretty many rounds and a smallish gun and a defensive pistol and make major uh, in matches, which means you get more points, you know, generally speaking, on target. Okay. Uh, as long as you get center mass with nine you still get the same points but 
Uh, 40 is considered major caliber generally in, in IPSC and all that. And so I said, oh, cool, everybody's excited about it. And a lot of people still use it now in different firearms, but they use 40 in that competition to get to make major uh, factor, okay, power factor. So that was kind of the impetus. That's why I got interested in early on. It wasn't because I had been in a lot of gunfights and the nine millimeter just wasn't getting the job done and I needed a more manly caliber. That was not it at all. It was really through that competition uh, arena is where I got interested in it. And you see all this pretty 40 caliber ammo, speaking of that, from Federal, we appreciate their help. They are feeding the guns today, okay? Uh, and, and then I carried it. I, I, you know, I've mentioned before, I, was, uh, I did reserve uh, deputy work. I volunteered with the local county uh, sheriff's office here for eight or 10 years. And, and this is, uh, well, I traded that gun off, but I, I carried a Glock 23 like that one, an old one, okay? Almost the entire time that I did that. And uh, I competed with it. I uh, competed in IPSC, uh, some in IDPA. Uh, even in Glock matches, so I have a lot of experience with the 40. I, I think, I remember having, I've told you this before, buying factory ammo, it was Winchester, is all it was available when it came out, and actually competing in IPSC matches, just carrying boxes of ammo, which is unusual, most people hand load for the matches and all that, so I had to carry those boxes of ammo, that's all you had for it, there was no brass available or anything, and I shot a Glock 22 in a couple of matches, I might have been the first person in Tennessee, whoop de doo what a, need a medal, right? For, but I, I might have been one of the first, or the first, I don't know, that shot a 40 caliber in an IPSC match in Tennessee. I don't know. Uh, I remember another fellow had one, and he had a bunch of boxes of ammo, too. And then we quickly started hand-loading for it and you know, competed with it. Anyway, I have a lot of experience with it. And it's still a great round. You know, when I revisit, what we're doing is updating you, you know, our thoughts. It's still a great pistol. Uh, I feel like I can take this and... and I, was, I hadn't shot a 40, a 23, or any 40, and wow, John, it, it might have been two years. I don't know, maybe we did a video on one, I don't know, but I haven't shot a 40 in a long, long time. These 23s, I had to dig them out, find them, and uh, they probably need oil and everything else. And I shot at the, the red plate over there and hit it uh, without too much trouble, you know, whatever, half the time. I mean, it's still a good shooter. In some ways, I don't know, I was telling John, I, I almost think the added recoil of the 40 helps me keep the, the gun on a target or something. That's kind of a weird thing. So it still shoots well, no problem with, with that at all. It's a good cartridge. A lot of people like to bash the 40, of course, uh, but it's reliable. So many police departments still carry it. Uh, I would be fine carrying it, uh, no problem at all. It's, it's a good cartridge. Uh, does it solve all the world's problems? Of course not. Uh, and with all the recent studying of ballistics, the FBI has done, the military, and everybody else, we learn, we know, that there's just not much difference between a really high quality 9mm defensive round, you know, like that. That happens to be an HST I took out of a, one of my fire. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, that in this, a uh, 9 or in a 40 or a 45, there's not that much difference. I, uh, uh, I was hearing someone talk about a surgeon recently that does autopsies and all that kind of thing. I was talking about you, unless you can find a bullet, you really almost cannot tell the difference. You don't know what the uh, person was shot with, hopefully a bad guy, but you just can't even tell, okay? So now that being said, of course, and I'm not going to get into the ballistics arguments or not, you know, obviously bigger is a little better, you know, duh, or else why would we have 50 BMG, you know, <laughs> or 500 Magnum, you know. A bigger generally is a little better, but in a handgun cartridge, there's not that much difference between a 9, a 40, 45. There is some difference. It's not dramatic, okay? And on the street, it's generally been discovered there's not much difference, all right? But we won't get in that argument, okay? There is a little difference. There has to be a little bit. All right. All of that to say this, I finally uh, realized that in that little joke I had here, finding the gun when I came up here to start the video was indicative of kind of what I was going through. I, I like the nine, I like the 19, I've liked it a long time, the 26 and nine millimeter, the 23 and 40, the 27 and 40, y'all know that if you've been around a while, yeah, don't you? 
Well, what was happening to me, I don't know what's been now, 10 years ago, and it had been crossing my mind, you know, because I would shoot both uh, a lot, and I'd, I'd kind of alternate sometimes even carrying them. And I'd have guns placed here and there, and this one I'd be grabbing, and I've got lock boxes and different things, and I'd have a 40 here, maybe a nine over there, and I'd have magazines here and there, and some of them loaded, you know, ready for whatever I needed. And, and it just got to bothering me a little bit. My life wasn't simple enough. I was overcomplicating my life, and I was playing with uh, fire there to some extent. Because look at that. You really can't tell any difference amongst those firearms or even the magazines, can you? There's a 9mm magazine in there somewhere, or a couple of them. The rest of them are 40s, I think. And then uh, there's one 9mm, is there one 9mm pistol? No, there's, yeah, there's one. This is a, no, that's a, yeah, that's a 26. Looks just like a 27. And there's a 19 here somewhere. Yeah, that's a nine millimeter. See? There's just the 19 and the 23 are the same firearm. See, there's three of them, two 40s and a 19, you know? And the 27 and 26 are the same way. The magazines are the same size. They look alike. You could put this, this 40 caliber magazine in, where is the nine? There's a 19, pop it in there. You know, it happens to be a long magazine, but it's fitting just fine, see? Let's find one that's, uh, here's a, that's a nine, here's a 40, goes in flush. It could have ammo in it, you know, and everything, you think you're ready to go, but you're not, because it's not gonna chamber a 40 in a nine millimeter. Right? Anyway, that was part of the reason, is just several things. Uh, I decided, you know, I need to settle on one caliber, and I like the nine millimeter, I like the 19, I like the 26. Also, I had acquired some pocket fire. I had the PM9, some you know different, really good uh, LC9s and 9S. Uh, what else? Uh, and now the 43, different nine millimeters. I was pocket carrying and moving around. You know what? I need to settle on one. I think I'm just going to put my 40s away and go to the 26 if I want to fire them that size. The 19, if I want to fire them that size, and even out of the 17, if I want a little bigger, you know. Uh, and in all my magazines, I put all the 40. I had to go in and get my magazines out of a black bag I have locked up. All my 40 stuff, I intentionally put it all. I tried to gather up all my 40 caliber magazines and get them together, put them in a bag. And so I went to nine. Okay, so you know, I'm not going to accidentally pull out a 40 mag. You know, I've got 14 terrorists trying to break in, and I'm I'm trying to stick 40 caliber magazines in my Glock 19 or my Glock 17. Okay, so that was part of the reason. And some of you might think that's foolish, uh, but I that was part of the reason I just decided to settle on one one caliber. And I could honestly be happy if it was all for everything was 40. You know, I like that too. Uh, I have a long history with 40. I don't bash it. I'm not gonna. You know, people all over the internet like to bash the 40. It's kind of fashionable to bash it. Uh, in light of again the things, some of the things I mentioned, some of the adoptions in the military, the FBI, uh, some of the testing that's been done recent decade, a lot of agencies are moving back to the nine. Okay, and so I don't know what the numbers are. I would guess that it may just be like 10 percent or something less in terms of sales of 40 caliber ammo guns you know just because i think it has the diminished to some extent in sales and in popularity but i don't think it's probably all that significant a lot of people still like it it's still a very viable cartridge a lot of people swear by it and i'd have no problems you know sticking with it myself so i don't know what the numbers would be you could probably talk to your local gun shops and if they like nine better they're probably going to exaggerate the numbers if they like 40 better they might exaggerate the other way but uh, it, I, my guess is that it has, I don't think it's a guess, I think it has uh, declined a little bit in popularity. So that would re be reflected in sales. So that's kind of where it is now. That's where I am now. And I think that's kind of where the market is. The guns are just as good as they've ever been in 40 and uh, shoot just as great. And you still got all the ammo out there that you want. But, uh, and I still like it, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm revisiting it to tell you what I think of it now. And I, I do still like it um, a lot. It shoots great. Uh, I could carry it for the next five weeks and not have a problem at all. It's just that I needed to kind of simplify my life and it, it works better for me, I think, now in a nine. Now talk to me in six months or a year. And I, I mean, I've, I've been tempted a few times to bounce back to it, but right now that's kind of where I am, okay? 
and I think we probably ought to let John give you his impressions like we do in our revisits, okay? Because he probably doesn't agree with anything I said. If he's smart, he won't, will he? Let's hear what John has to say. Well, I'm not too smart, so I'm probably going to agree with most of what Dad said. Um, I think I came to this conclusion maybe before he did, dare I say, dare I say that. I've, uh, you know, Dad has always been liked 40s, like he mentioned. Uh, so I had the opportunity of growing up with 40 cows, being around, especially Glocks, only Glocks, I think. And I never really liked the 40 a whole lot. And it's not because, you know, the first thing people will pull out is say, oh, well, you're just recoil sensitive. And that's not it at all. I've shot enough guns where I'm not recoil sensitive you know, relative um, to, I don't know, someone, someone my size, I guess. Um, I've never liked the 40 because I've always felt like I can shoot the 9mm or a 45 in a larger gun a lot better than I can shoot the 40 because of, of, of the recoil that the 40 has where it, it, like people describe it as being snappy and I would kind of agree with that it's not as bad I don't think as some people make it out to be but it does make a little bit of a difference and I feel like I can really put a lot more rounds down range on target faster smoother and easier with a nine millimeter uh, than I can with a 40 and I don't feel like the 40 cal has enough of an advantage over the nine millimeter for me to give up the shootability of the nine millimeter and then plus you have a little extra capacity not much but a little extra capacity with the nine millimeter which is kind of nice if i want to move up to a bigger handgun cartridge i'm going to go on up to a 45 acp or like a 10 millimeter or something like that so the 40 just sits too much in like a, a middle ground for me and that's one reason i've, I've never loved it but like that said it's a good round you know it it, it works uh, it, it does the job uh, but i just prefer the nine uh, especially or the 45 acp but i'm gonna shoot it because there's ammo here let's see where's that uh okay i'm gonna shoot this one because then i don't have any excuses for missing because it's the old one. Oh, another thing too is um uh, with the gen fours where they changed that spring out it kind of helped reduce the recoil just a tad almost hard to notice the uh that that could you know possibly you know change the game for you a little bit with the 40 um because i think that those differences were are a little bit more noticeable with the 40 versus the nine on the gen 4 glocks but this is an old one this is a gen 2 okay and i haven't just like that i haven't shot a, a 40 caliber anything in probably uh, a long time at least a year or so okay uh, I'll try something big first. We go for the green two liter. All right. Uh. Okay. See, I feel like I can shoot it okay, but I'm having to kind of adjust my grip a little bit and, and focus more on controlling the gun more so than just my side alignment and trigger pull like with the nine millimeter. So again, good gun, Glock 23, caliber is fine, but I prefer the Glock 19 in this category. Okay, dad, we need some smart stuff to be said, so you come back. Okay, John, you made a little sense, you know, not much, but a little. No, actually it made a lot of sense. And uh, I pretty well you know, knew what you thought about that. You just, you never did get indoctrinated by me. Of course I didn't try to indoctrinate you, but you're right. I was thinking before you even said that, that you pretty much grew up around you know, my carrying a 40 caliber, you know, so much of the time. And uh, it is snappier, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but you know, you know, I'm pretty much in agreement with what you said. The one thing I meant to mention uh, too is, I never really worried about it much, but you know, this kaboom issue, I think the Batman and Robin invented that term for Glock, but you know, kaboom, kaboom. Uh, if, you, if you spend much time on the internet, uh, if you have over the last uh, 20 years, 30 years, you're probably familiar with uh, the kaboom and the Glock 40 and all that, the, the terms. Uh, you know, I, I just picked up a couple of these pieces of brass. We've been shooting it. Yeah, there's a little bulge in the brass. You know, you can see it there. There's a little, not much, because they have improved their chamber a little bit or tightened it up a little bit, but you can probably see there's just a little bit of a bulge. I think that first one, the nose, it shows up a little more maybe. There's a little bit of a bulge. And there used to be even more of a bulge. Uh, and 
you know, I'd hear and read about these 40s Glocks blowing up and everything. And I reloaded the brass. I'd reloaded lots of times for a lot of years. I never did have any trouble with that. And as I've mentioned on the internet to people that bring it up, yeah, maybe there's something to it, but it's, I, I've never had it happen. And I've had a lot of 40 caliber Glocks and I've shot as many as, as much as anybody in a 40 caliber. And I don't even know anybody that it's happened to. I don't even know anybody who knows anybody that it's happened to, as far as I know, <laughs> really, in all these many, many years. Uh, so I've always thought that's got to be largely uh, maybe internet myth to some extent. Uh, I think there is something to it, uh, but I, I don't know what it is exactly. Uh, a part of it I've always suspected was maybe the competition partly and then the fact that everybody has a glock you know uh, i mean that's changing but so many people had a glock and in 40 caliber so if one person had a problem somewhere they double loaded it around you know and turned it into a nuclear uh nuclear weapon uh then you know then all of glock world gets broad uh, brushed with that of course and then lots of people ha happy to uh to uh, spread that word right uh, because a lot of people don't like Glocks or they don't like the 40 or are very happy to keep that story going. But then again, apparently it does happen. I, I just never have seen it. But anyway, that was one little bitty factor too. I thought, well, you know, with a nine, I don't, that's not an issue. You know, I can reload this ammo as much as I want and shoot it. That, that's not an issue. The Glock was designed around the nine and a lot of other pistols, you know, too. Uh, but you know, mainly we're talking about the Glock, I guess. Uh, a lot of 40 caliber firearms out there. Uh, you know, so anyway, those were some of the reasons reasons uh, as, as well. Although, like I said, I could go back to it and not worry a bit. In fact, let's shoot something. We didn't put anything on the paper. I don't want to go away till we shoot a little more. Feels good. Let me try. Uh, well, let's just shoot that paper. You know, and it, you can tell it kind of hits hard, hits harder than, uh, you know, nine millimeter. I can tell on that stop sign, you know, it just moves it around a little bit more. Hit the cowboy. Yeah. And you can probably see the firearm uh, jumping around a little bit more. There's more recoil involved. I'll go ahead and empty this mag on the burn barrel and uh, I'll try to control it as best I can. So, I mean, it does uh, bounce. You could say it's a little snappier, but uh, it's still very, very controllable. And I've shot the heck out of 40 calibers and I, I've just not had any of those, those uh, dramatic uh, events that you, know, you hear about uh, on the internet. So I don't know that that's anything to worry about. Uh, you know, when we do these revisits, sometimes I like to talk about pricing and where this gun is today. Is it still available? It just depends on the firearm. We all know uh, n none of that really applies to the Glock 23. It's the same price as the 19, I guess, and they're just as available, still being made the same way. Uh, it's it's a, just a very popular, common firearm. Uh, one reason I wanted to do this, too, is I have a uh, an FAQ video out there on my favorite firearm or favorite pistol, whatever we call it. You know, we finally did one on that. I had the question asked so many times, and that was what five years ago, maybe or six or seven. And I, in that FAQ, this is my favorite firearm, the Glock 23. You know, and, and a lot of that was not just the 40; it's the size of the firearm. It's why the Glock 19, I think, is the number one selling pistol out there, probably still, even I would guess. It's just the perfect size pistol. Uh, and really, regardless of who makes it, it doesn't matter if it was a CZ or a Smith & Wesson or what it is, this size pistol is just a perfect little pistol. You know, kind of a compact, holds a lot of ammo, whether it's a 40 or a nine, it's just great, great size. You know, it's that, that middle ground that uh, is so suitable for just about anything, range work or carry or whatever. Uh, nice capacity. And so that was kind of it. So. My transition has been not to a totally different firearm as being my favorite. Uh, well, I don't know. We'll, do, we'll save that favorite for another day maybe, but my, probably one of my favorite uh, carry pistols is a 19 now, I guess you could say. So uh, anyway, that's kind of my right revisit on the, the Glock 23. 
felt like we needed to do that because you've not seen it lately and I've not seen it lately. So I was keeping this deep, dark secret away from you. I really was. And some of you kind of suspected it because I'd get questions. You still shoot the, you still carry the Glock 23? You know, because you weren't seeing it. You weren't hearing about it from me. And I wasn't trying to keep it a secret necessarily. It's just been a transition. Uh, actually, it was kind of a, it's, I think it was a transition, a slow transition until I finally decided, I thought about it a lot. And when was this? Might have been like five years ago. I don't know, but I'd been thinking about needing to do this, and I discussed earlier. I need to settle on one, and then. But when I did it, it was very quick. You know, put these away, got out the 19s, the 26s, the magazines, and gathered up all the 40 mags and towed them away like they were evil or something. Okay, and if you got one mixed up at the wrong time, it could be uh, evil, couldn't it? So that's kind of my story on the. The 23, my revisit, because, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's in a different place now for me. Even though I just enjoy shooting the thing, so uh, we might have to do another revisit. Life is good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that, because I know I sure did. While I've got you here, I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. They also have hands-on experience even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just wanted to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonoran Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter is Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. It's a lot to digest. So you're going to want to think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere because um, some of these look pretty good.